Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Now, if you guys haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us and we really appreciate it. So with that being said, let's discuss cellular adaptations. Now, one thing to remember is in our body, the cells that are located are constantly under a lot of stress due to the environment that they are in. And because of this stress, they're able to adapt. And then one example of a stressful environment is is our stomach right the stomach lining the cells that make up the stomach lining are constantly being attacked by our acidic stomach contents and because of that constant attack from the stomach acid the stomach lining is able to adapt and it's able to continuously regenerate even though it's being broken down all the time now although cells are being uh, are constantly stressed out in the environment that they are in our organs are generally in a state of homeostasis and that's very important to understand because they're able to function properly even though there's some stress placed upon them. Now, the, the change that occurs is based off of the type and the severity of the stress that is placed upon the cell and the organ. And an increase in the stress that's put upon our body leads to the growth of an organ. And we're going to talk more about that in a second. But essentially, there are two main types of growth adaptations that you should be aware of and that you should have a good understanding of. And those are hypertrophy and hyperplasia. So with that being said, let's discuss hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is a type of growth adaptation that occurs due to an increase in the size of a cell in the organ and that is very important hypertrophy has to do with the size and I always use the O as a memory tool right you see how there's an O in the word hypertrophy well in my mind I think of the O expanding to a larger O instead of a small O so essentially hypertrophy is when a cell grows from a normal size cell to a bigger cell now how does that happen essentially when a cell is growing during hypertrophy the genes are activated that induce an increase in protein synthesis as well as organelle production. That's very important because when a cell is growing, not only do you need more protein, hence why you have an increase in protein synthesis, you also need more energy coming from the mitochondria. So you're going to end up producing and synthesizing more organelles that will allow you to go through hypertrophy. Now, one thing to remember, we're going to come back to this, but one thing to always remember is that very few organs only go through hypertrophy. Usually, they'll go through hyperplasia and hypertrophy or hyperplasia by itself, but only hypertrophy is very, very rare, and we're going to discuss which organs do that in a little bit. But for now, let's talk about hyperplasia. We already talked about hypertrophy. Hyperplasia is also a type of growth abdat adaptation ugh, is also a type of growth adaptation and what happens in hyperplasia is that you end up having an increase in the number of cells and this is very high yield both of these concepts the size and high yield are uh, size and number of cells are high yield as f right so let's just break it down one more time so if you have hypertrophy you are going to increase the size of the cells. And if you have hyperplasia, like we're talking about right now, you are going to increase the number of cells. That's all very important to remember. Commit that to your memory because it is a huge distinguishing factor. Now, when it comes to hyperplasia, because you're increasing the number of cells, it'll essentially be, let's say, if you have three cells, these three cells in the same location, will might they might become let's say 10 cells or 20 cells or 30 cells, essentially, but they're not changing the number, uh, sorry, not changing the size, you're only changing the number because the size, as you can see in this set of three and in this set of like 20 or 30, is exactly the same. The size is the same, but the number of cells have grown. Now, all of this occurs because you have new stem cells, you have stem cells that are producing new cells, and that's what we wrote right here. Hyperplasia involves the production of new cells from stem cells, whereas hypertrophy involves no new production. It just involves the current cells that you have uh, expanding their size, essentially. 
That is a huge distinguishing factor. Now, there are normal examples of hyperplasia and there are pathologic examples of hyperplasia. And a normal example would be the uterine lining during the menstrual cycle. Now, if you guys know, during the menstrual cycle, the uterine lining grows. And then during uh, the end of the menstrual cycle, towards when a woman gets their period, the uterine lining ends up shedding. And that's when uh, a, a female ends up bleeding. What happens is during the menstrual cycle, the uterine lining is going to start to build up and it's building up because it is undergoing hyperplasia. It's not going hypertrophy because if it was going hypertrophy and then it shed every single time, you would have no uterus after a while. But because it's going through hyperplasia, it's growing the number of cells and when it sheds, you still have a baseline number of cells that are able to keep the uterine lining normal. That is an example of hyperplasia. An example of, uh, sorry, an example of normal uh, hyperplasia. A pathologic hyperplasia it can also happen. And when it happens, it can often lead to dysplasia. And from dysplasia, you guys might know, it can lead to cancer. So that's usually the way it goes. One example of this would be endometrial hyperplasia. In the endometrium, your normal amount of, you know, the, the how thick the endometrium should be is already decided. But when it goes through hyperplasia, you have a high likelihood and a high risk of it developing into endometrial carcinoma. So that's very important. Now, as always, there is one exception to this rule, and you should know this. This is very important. And that exception is BPH, benign prosthetic hyperplasia. BPH is, is something you'll see a lot in the clinics. You'll see men coming in who will say, I have a difficulty going to the bathroom, especially urinating. Um, and it feels like it's just a, a, their stream is dribbling and it's a weak stream. And when you look at it, you might think that BPH is uh, a type of hyperplasia that could lead to prostate cancer, right? It, there's a high likelihood, right? You would probably be thinking because it's a type of hyperplasia. Well, actually, that's not the case. You see, BPH is not a pathologic hyperplasia that will lead to cancer. It is a pathologic hyperplasia in the sense that it does not normally happen. It doesn't happen to everyone, and not every male has BPH. Their prostate doesn't hyper uh, become hyperplastic. It stays normal, but for some people, it does grow, and when they go through BPH, uh, they end up seeing the symptoms, hence why it's pathologic. However, they are not at a high risk of developing prostate cancer, so that is not a typical uh, um, pathologic hyperplasia to dysplasia to cancer methodology that will occur. That's very important to understand that BPH is actually an exception to this rule. So I would also say this is very high yield because oftentimes you will be questioned on BPH, whether it is a precursor lesion to prostate cancer, and the answer is no. Now, often hypertrophy and hyperplasia do not happen by themselves. They often happen together, and that is usually what happens. An example of this would actually be the uterus lining during pregnancy, right? If you think about the uterus, normally the uterus is pretty small, right? It looks something like this. Right, this is my rendition of the uterus, and then you have your your uh, fallopian tubes. Okay, so normally this is the size of a normal uterus. Now, there's no way you'll be able to contain an entire baby in there. So what's going to end up happening is that the uterus cell sizes increase uh, in size, which is hypertrophy, right? They end up becoming larger in their size. And you also have an increase in the number, which is hyperplasia. So during pregnancy, you're going through, the uterus is going through hypertrophy and hyperplasia in, in order to accommodate the fetus and to make sure that the fetus can grow properly. That is an example of the uterus, of a hypertrophy and hyperplasia going together. Now, as always, there is an exception to this rule, and that exception is permanent tissue. You see, permanent tissue is very different. It's something that does not have any stem cells. Permanent tissue has no stem cells. And because it has no stem cells, you cannot go through hyperplasia. You need stem cells to undergo hyperplasia. But because you do not have stem cells, you can only go through hypertrophy in permanent tissue. And there are three main permanent tissues you need to remember and those are the cardiac myocytes, you have your skeletal muscles, and you have your nerves. That is so important. You see, these three types of tissues do not have any stem cells, and thus they will only undergo hypertrophy. And this is an example of an enlarged heart. 
right? This is your left ventricle. And as you can see, it is way, way larger than normal. Hence, this is an example of hypertrophy and not hyperplasia. There is no hyperplasia going on. It's only hypertrophy. So that is very, very important. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for your studies. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you back here with more.